Gee, that's beautiful, Mr. Allegro. Well, I've done better, Addie, but I guess it'll do. Mr. Swift ordered some more orchids. Who for this time? I don't know. He said to leave them at the desk. Well, when you get finished wrapping it, I'll take it in. Hello, John Allegro, Flores. Come in, yes? I believe I forgot my key. Take it right back up again, miss. Here it is. How stupid of me. Darling! Please help me pretend you know me. I'm beginning to feel that I do. You're late, darling. I won't be again. Oh, but you're forgiven. I adore orchids. I knew you would. I'll bet you're dying for a drink. Well, I should say so. You and I are going to get along. Yes, sir? Do you happen to know who that man is with Miss Chapman? Oh, that's John Allegro. He has the florist shop here at the hotel. Thanks. I can't thank you enough, Mr. Uh... Allegro. John Allegro. And these are for a customer. My name's Glenda Chapman. You see, my father and I are in terrible danger. He's an inventor. Don't tell me it's the atom bomb. How wonderful you know. Then you must know that any unfriendly element would stop at nothing to obtain his secret. And that unfriendly little fat man out there is one of them. But you know everything. I've been around. Somebody ought to tell our police department that one of their boys is taken outside work. He didn't go for that, eh? What do you think? It wasn't a bad try. Most people don't know a detective unless they've had a reason to dodge them. This isn't my pitch, gorgeous. What do you want? I want to get out of here alone. Will you help me? Who's been helping you up to now? No one. This is the first time I've noticed my friend. If I were to leave my fur... The little man out there would know you'd gone. You're fast, Mr. Allegra. That's what my name means. Will you do it? Why not? All I do with that. You can uh, take it up to my room. If you don't mind. Not at all. Is anything wrong, sir? I wouldn't say so. He is with her now. John Allegro. I don't know. Uh, A-L-L-E-G-R-O, I guess.
we are. Thanks, Eddie. Gee, Miss Chapman, sure gonna be loaded with orchids. How did you know who they were for? Well, I ought. I've been taking them up to her every day for weeks. I ain't dumb, you know. Gee, she's gorgeous. And what a wardrobe. You know something? If I had clothes like that, I'd go out every night. I'd want to be seen. She's just modest. If you let that go and take these up to her, I'll let you go home. Oh, gee, thanks, Mr. Allegro. Don't read it. Oh, Mr. Allegro, I wouldn't do that. Good night. Good night, Eddie. Sorry, we're closed. So, all right, Johnny. I don't want to buy anything. Pretty. Nice place you've got here, Johnny uh, Rock. I had you figured for a copper. My friends call me Schultze. I'm not one of them. I was born Johnny Allegro. If you're looking for him, you found the right guy. John Allegro, a right guy. Johnny Rock, a wrong one. Allegro started out all right. Night school, church regular, legitimate job with a florist. A miracle, that kind of a kid from Hell's Kitchen. Miracles don't last. That's right. You deliver flowers to the gangsters and see all the pretty girls and the big dough. The kind of temptation's tough. You almost couldn't blame him. I'm not blaming anybody. Went to work for Seco Magnum. That's when the boys changed his name to Johnny Rock. Then the inevitable, he got trapped with the law. Maybe not accidentally, maybe he was framed. Maybe. So he went to Sing Sing for 10 years. But he escaped. I didn't know you knew Johnny Rock that well. I didn't know him, Johnny, but I think I understood him. I'll get my hat. You must be anxious to make this pinch. Wait a minute, Johnny. Let me finish. Then Allegro turned up again. He couldn't make the regular army because of a bullet hole in his knee. But that didn't stop him. He heard the OSS would take him, and he joined up. Why? Did you come here to tell me stories or take me downtown? And one night in the South Pacific, Allegro jumped from a plane into enemy territory. What you did that night saved an entire detachment. Why did you make that jump? I was pushed. You volunteered? Why? I still say I was pushed. You don't get a citation for distinguished service for being pushed. A lot of guys made jumps. Why don't you quit stalling? What do you want? I want you to make another jump, Johnny. A bigger one. Why pick on me? I didn't. She did. You've been seeing quite a bit of her lately. Nice seeing, too. That makes you the right man for the job. Job? Treasury Department. It's big stuff. I want you to find out all about her. Sorry, but stooling's out of my line. This isn't stooling, Johnny. This is big trouble. Big enough to bring me all the way from Washington just to see you. I can't tell you what it is. You'll have to go it blind. It isn't good. Worse than the Pacific and just as easy to get yourself dead. Sounds good. 
I suppose the state gives me time off for good behavior. I'm not promising you a thing, Johnny. Think it over, son. I'll be back. Of course, you know I'll have to report to the New York Police Department. But I'd like to wait until I could say something nice about you. Who is it? Johnny. Hello, Johnny. What is this? I thought we were only going to dinner. I've been sent for, Johnny. I've got to get out of here right away. Sent for? By whom? Believe me, if I could tell you, I would. Well, where are you going? You can at least tell me that much. I can't. I can't tell you anything. Well, how do you figure on getting out? You can help me, Johnny. You're smart. How smart can a guy be? Johnny. All right. Wait here. Gore, how's business? Fine, thanks, Sam. The basement's clear. We can use the freight elevator. Thanks, Johnny. Just a minute, Allegro. Going somewhere, Miss Chapman? Yes, and she's in a hurry. Plane. The airport will be swarming with the law. This is a private field. Go out, Ventura. All right. <laughs> 
Everybody out. I'll call on you if I need you. All right, get up. We don't have to think you're dead. Well, you certainly took your time. I will be dead when my wife sees my coat. <laughs> Look at the burn from that wadding. What a sock he hit me. Bet that's the part Johnny enjoyed the most. Well, I purposely left myself wide open. Go on, get in. You did fine. Did fine, he says. One real bullet mixed up with those blanks, and I'd spend the evening in an undertaking place. How do you look all ready for him? Uh, besides, somebody stepped on my hand. OK, so for a while, you can't count on your fingers. I think this is a waste of time. How do you know you'll ever see him again? Uh, I don't. Goodbye, Johnny. What do you mean, goodbye? Go to San Francisco. I'll run an ad in the personals when I get back. With a getaway like that, you ditch me here with a murder ad? Well, I can't take you with me. No, I guess you can. You can forget about running that ad. There won't be an answer. Johnny, try to understand. I do. You just told me how I stand with you. You fool, you know how I feel about you. It's just that where I'm going, you'd be in more danger than you would be here. The people I work with don't like strangers. This stranger just shot a cop for him, remember? Well, I know, but... It's taking such a chance. What kind of a chance have I got staying here? All right. Come on. We should have had the Florida blue plate. Only 65 cents. It's a bargain. We wouldn't be close to the Yankee Spring training camp, would we? They're at St. Petersburg. No kidding. Mm -hmm. There must be a time limit to this little game we're playing, Glenda. What game? Um, where is it? This place we're headed for? Patience is its own reward. Who's your friend? The boat's here. Boat? I haven't a passport. You don't need one. How patient can a guy be? This is like following a C&I dog. Aren't they amazing animals? I simply adore them. Me too. It's all right, Roy. He's going with us.
this wouldn't be Palm Island, would it? You better forget about the geography. Welcome home. Morgan, this is a How friend. funny. You brought a friend with you. How hospitable. I was just going to explain that. Why trouble to explain? It's so touchingly natural. This is Johnny Allegro. You actually know his name. I'm Morgan Vallon. Always glad to meet any of Glenda's friends. Though she doesn't usually bring them with her. I had to bring him here, Morgan. He killed a detective for me so I could get here. How adventurous. How romantic. Morgan, don't be foolish. Forgive me, Johnny, uh, whatever your name is. I want to thank you for any assistance you may have given my little wife. Wife? <laughs> she forgot to tell you, of course. She usually does. Or were you afraid he might not have come here with you? I told you why I brought him here. He had no other getaway. This is Johnny Rock. They want him for escaping a stretch at Sing Sing. And what have you told him? Nothing. He doesn't even know where he is. And how did that minute mind of yours conclude that anyone could be of service to me with his pictures in all the papers? With a number across the front of them? They took those a long time ago. I've changed a lot since then. But your type never changes. Just looking at you, Makes one think of alley fighting, tommy guns. Is that bad? It's not for me. You see all this? Nice museum. You would call it that. But it's my library, my concert hall, my trophy room. Here I have the best the world has to offer. And I don't intend to let anything jeopardize it. I can permit only people around me, of whose methods I'm sure, that bulge in your coat pocket. The gun with which you shot the detective, no doubt. No doubt. Give it to me. Ugly, noisy, smelly. No skill needed. A stupid, dangerous toy. Any doddering fool without muscle or talent could fire that. Now this, this is something different. Strength, skill, grace. A weapon for a man of culture. In a tough spot, give me a trigger instead of a piece of string. You're in a tight spot now. Or didn't you know it? Maybe I'm not very bright. Either you're a very brave man or you underestimate me. And I will not be underestimated. Do you hear? Not a bad shot. Thank you. Would you care to demonstrate your skill with this thing? I could match that with a shotgun. You win, Mr. Vallon. Uh, just get the feel of this bow. Pull back on that string. 
takes muscle to pull 70 pounds, doesn't it? That bow will outshoot everything but a high-powered rifle. An arrow from it is more deadly than a bullet. Why, I've killed antelope, wild boar, mountain lions. Suppose the guy wanted to commit suicide with a thing like this. How would he go about it? You have a sense of humor. I like that. And it's not inconceivable that I might like you. You no doubt need some rest. Sounds like a good idea. I could use a little sleep. Drugo, take the gentleman's things and show him up to the guest room. Oh, uh, I don't have any things. I didn't get a chance to pack. Who knows? Perhaps you have enough. Maybe more than you need. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Valen. Good night, Johnny. What's the matter, Glenda? What about it? Your anxiety betrays you. Be yourself, Morgan. The audience is gone. All I say is he's quick and he's clever. He's a good man for us. I make the decisions here. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to hear the rest of my symphony. I'm going to bed. I must enjoy my favorite music alone. What better company could you have, Morgan? Good night.
That's a smart trick, Mr. Allegro. And that's another smart trick. You there, John Allegro? Of course you are. And you know I'll use the sound of your voice to judge a position. Grudgingly, my respect for you mounts, Johnny. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. Nice boat. Johnny, where have you been? I've been looking for you since early this morning. Well, you found me. What happened last night? Nothing. Why? Well, Morgan's so unpredictable. He's dangerous. He could... How come you forgot to tell me you were married? Can't you forget it? Without half trying. But I want to stay alive. I have told you what we have learned. Our cause needs workers. We will trust your judgment as to whether or not Allegro can be useful. Oh, good morning. Good morning. This is John Allegro, gentlemen. Mr. Vetch, Mr. Grote. You know my wife. Sorry you won't stay for breakfast, but I realize that my rich fare has never met with your approval. We have work to do. We go in for the continental style here, Johnny. Help yourself. Lobster for breakfast? Had I known you were coming, I'd have arranged for coffee and donuts. It's good enough for me. How do you like our island? You were exploring it this morning. Or in your vernacular, casing the joint. I took a walk around. I'd have a tough time finding it, even if I knew where it was. Did you discover anything when you searched their boat? Yeah. I'm being watched. Well, I discovered that what Glenda says is true. You are Johnny Rock. There is a sentence hanging over you. And you shot a detective. <clears throat> the story's in all the papers. Well, does that satisfy you? We'll know better this afternoon. What happens this afternoon? We don't allow our guests to become bored, Johnny. And since Florida isn't too far, we're going to the races.
Wait for us here, Jeffrey. Good spot we picked a park. We can get out in a hurry. Morgan, the test traffic. You should have let me brought my gun. Don't improvise. You'll be told what to do. Is that the dough that stocks the mutual windows? Could be. yourself and explain that you want to make an emergency call. A doctor will be allowed to use the office phone. Dial this number. We'll be on the other end. Doesn't matter. Just remember that you're a doctor. Oh, uh, the phoning is just a cover-up. What happens then? Stick to your role, and a natural sequence of events will occur. We'll wait for you right here. Gillip. I'd like to use your phone. If it's an emergency, doctor, all right. You'll find it right over there on the desk. Thank you. Dr. McGillop, I'd like to get a message to Mr. Schultz at once. Schultz? He's not here, but he's in town. I can get to him. Yes, that's right. It's about his boy, Johnny. Tell him the operation has taken place today. It's urgent that he be at the Veterans Hospital tonight. I'm not positive, but I'll try and be there. Thank you very much. Thanks. You're entirely welcome, Doctor. It's inconvenient that you can't phone from the track. You see, phone service lends aid to illegal bookmaking. You understand that, Doctor? Yeah, that's right. What do I do, check it? No, Johnny. We're leaving. You mean we can't stay and bet on a few races? I'm surprised at your lack of business acumen. We're not going to throw good money after bad. Underestimated Morgan, didn't you? And you know how it irks him to be underestimated. No wonder. I've known a lot of smart guys, but that's genius. Then perhaps you've changed your mind about the necessity for carrying a gun. From now on, call me Robin Hood. Well, you're hardly the type, but you're responding to treatment. Where do we go from here? We don't have to go right home, do we? We leave for the island right after dinner. Oh, that's fine. How about letting me repay your hospitality? Are there any good restaurants around here? Thank you, Johnny, but I have some business in town. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. But there's a very good cafe, the Topaz. You eat there. I don't like to eat alone, but I suppose... Oh, I didn't intend for you to. Glenda will be glad to go with you. Won't you, darling? I'd love it. Good.
glad you suggested this, Johnny. Fallon isn't a bad guy after all. His sending me with you was a gesture of precaution. That's okay. To me, it's a reward. That was nice, Johnny. was all mine. I like the taste of anisette. Reminds me of those licorice whips we used to buy in penny candy stores. Remember? You haven't answered my question. Oh, what was it? How you happened to marry a guy like Morgan. <laughs> That's a pretty dull story. Maybe I'd like to hear it. All right. But remember, you asked for it. I was working at an exclusive jeweler's on Fifth Avenue. I used to admire the men that came in there, the jewels they bought, the clothes the women wore. How I envied those women. Just being around them gave me a vicarious feeling like I was one of them. I used to hate the prospect of quitting time and going back to my two-by-four walk-up. Well, one day Morgan came in, looked at some jewelry. He couldn't make up his mind. Suddenly he called me over and asked my opinion. I was flattered. I told him I liked the diamond wristwatch best. He bought it and thanked me and walked out. And? This is it. As I said, Morgan can be very charming. At times. After we were married, those times were less frequent, until finally it became purely a business association, as far as I was concerned. You're not listening, Johnny. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What's wrong? It's a malaria flare. What can we do about it? I gotta get some Adderbrook. Where, Johnny, where? At the Veterans Hospital. Let's hurry. I'll take you there. You can wait right over there, Corporal. It will only be a few minutes. Yes? This is John Allegro. He's had a malaria flare-up. Oh, well, I'll take him to Dr. James. Would you mind waiting in the solarium, please? You'll find it right down the hall. He'll be all right. This is Mr. Allegro, Doctor. Malaria case. Thank you, Miss Baldwin. I'll take care of him. Hop up, young man. Hello, Johnny. You're a little late. Yeah, and if you don't move in pretty soon, I'll be the late Johnny Rock. Which reminds me, what happened to that cop I killed? He clipped the department for a new suit of clothes, and he wants me to tell you he owes you a sock and a jaw. Let him try and collect. Good gag, that malaria. How'd you expect me to get in here with an attack of hives? Morgan Valen's the head guy. We know that. The racket's counterfeiting. We know that, too. They distribute the phony stuff at the racetracks. The people don't examine their winnings. Did you know that? A couple of hundred thousand went into circulation today. They have an accomplice at the track, and I know where the real dough is. Now you can make your pinch. Not yet, Johnny. That's only pin money. Pin money? I told you this is a big job. I guess I better let you in on the whole thing. At the time Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, this money was printed. It was their plan to flood the West Coast with this currency in an attempt to wreck our economy. But we grabbed it, huh? Only the plates. No more could be printed, but there was still 500 million left in Korea. Other troops got in and the money disappeared. 500 million? That sounds like a foreign loan. How did Valen latch on to it? We don't know that he did or we'd have moved in. It's possible it's being doled out to him. That's where Vetch and Grote come in. Who are they? You mean there's something you didn't know? They came to see Valen this morning from another island of the mainland. This may be it, Johnny. Find out. It's a long way back over that ocean tonight. Where to? Where are you located? I don't know. You're not going to hold out on us, are you, Johnny? 
It's one of a few small islands off the coast. I don't know which one. The driver kept crossing me up by doing a lot of zigzagging. You have any shortwave equipment on board? Shift ashore telephone. Good. We'll arrange with the Coast Guard to stand by for a call every night at 10. You won't fire me if I'm a couple of minutes late. Don't worry. Oh, uh, Mr. Schultz, you forgot to tell me that she was married to Valen. Well, it happens to be news to us, too. Anything else? Yes. Valen's got the gun I shot that cop with. And the minute he finds out it's loaded with blanks, the honeymoon's over. Then the first thing you've got to do is to get that gun. You don't have to tell me that. Just tell me how. It's part of your job. Thanks. It's getting late. I better blow. Okay, Johnny. Be seeing you. I hope. Where did you happen to contract malaria, Johnny? Down the South Pacific. The last war. War hero, eh? Nah. I was standing in a bar one night when a mosquito flew in and bit me. What outfit were you in? Paratroopers. Make many jumps? Couple. It must have been exciting. How often do these attacks occur? Every now and then. Never know just when they're going to flare up. It was fortunate you were able to take care of it. Yeah. Well, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll get some air. That's the one. Oh, you're a little too good for me. Sure, right, nice. The motors purr like a little kitten. Aren't you afraid you might get lost? What are we doing, about 26 miles an hour? Guess that's nuts to you. Well, nice gabbing with you. We tried to follow them, but their boat didn't have any lights, and they gave us the slip. We looked for them nearly all night. With that kind of dough, what did you expect? Hoodlums like Johnny Rock don't change. You could be right. You could be perfectly right. But I'll be a happier man thinking you're wrong. Looking for your gun, Johnny? Yeah. Where is it? You don't need it. You're among friends. Just the same, I'd feel a lot safer if it was in my pocket. Don't be afraid of Morgan. He likes you. And you know how I feel. Be smart, will you? I'm not taking any chances. Chances? I took the chances bringing you here. 
I got you in, remember? Sure. Now that you did, I'm going to stay in. I like this racket. I even like Morgan. How about his wife? What about her? She can't do without you, Johnny. You can't do without her. Maybe. I'm sure going to try. Won't do you any good. Stop fighting yourself, Johnny. You know you want to hold me, don't you? Excuse us, Glenda. I have something to discuss with Mr. Allegro. Something important. A private matter. Roy doesn't trust you, Johnny. Roy doesn't? Perhaps he doesn't like your face. Maybe I don't like his. I like this spirit of mutual distrust. It could relieve me of a lot of responsibility. But I don't trust you either. I don't mean to be offensive. It's simply my policy to distrust everyone. To me, suspicion is another word for caution. Is that all you wanted to discuss with me? Oh, no. No, sit down, Johnny. I'm a man who enjoys competition. For instance, that scene I interrupted when I came in. Competition is healthy in all fields. Business, athletics, or women. In the latter category, especially in our particular case, I have complete confidence. Because I have the advantage of knowing Glenda. Then you can't lose. I'm glad you see it that way, Johnny. Because I must confess to a weakness. I'm a bad loser. Is there anything else? We'll consider the incident closed. For the present. Why, it's only 10 o'clock. Would you like to hear some good music? No, thanks. Uh, I think I could use a little fresh air. And besides, good music is wasted on me. I wouldn't want to be the one to say I told you so, but if we hear from Rock, I'll eat my hat.
Calling Coast Guard. Calling Coast Guard. Johnny Allegro calling Schultze. Schultze. Yo. Put some mustard on that hat. Coast Guard to Johnny. Come in, Johnny. Can't tell exactly what island we're on, but it took us an hour and 48 minutes to 26 knots. As near as I can figure, it's about 50 miles southeast. Okay, Johnny. Still don't know where the stuff comes from, but you better move in as close as you can. If I find out any more, I'll contact you. If I'm still alive. Right, Johnny. Where you been? No place. Where you been? Cigarette? As I can figure from his directions, we're about an hour off the island. Let's move to within about 15 minutes and lay off shore till we get word. What word? You were there last night, weren't you? Sure. He'll play along till he finds out where the stuff comes from. Then if we hear from him, I'll... Why don't you get seasick? If you're so sure, what are you drumming for? I like to drum. It seems rather significant that our quarters were entered last night. Last night? Another point of significance. Everything was left undisturbed. It might be advisable to further investigate your Mr. Allegro. However, most important at this time was the amount that was delivered. It wasn't enough? Far from enough, my friend. I consider it quite sufficient. Things have become very unsatisfactory to the Home Office. To the Home Office? Or to you? I have my reports to make. They feel that perhaps you tend to forget who, so to speak, set you up in business. And why? I forget nothing, my friend. They've had extravagant profits from their, so to speak, investment. Comfort, profits, investments, business. Strange language for us to use, isn't it? And all this talk of you and they, as if our interests no longer coincided. They've received ample. Ample. In a cause which demands everything. There seems to be some misunderstanding here. No. There is a stronger word. You know the word. Treason. That's too strong a word. I resent it. And for which there are stronger consequences, which you'll resent even more. Today's communique suggests that you take a little trip with us. So? To the Home Office. Is that an invitation or an order? If you agree, it is an invitation. If you hesitate, it is an order. In either case, it's suicide. But you forget one thing. The money is hidden on my island. I have it. 
all of it. And I intend to keep it. I strongly advise you to reconsider. From now on, this business is mine. Then I regret to announce that you're now out of business. Draw that bow and we fire. In either case, I'm as good as dead. But this arrow will take one of you with me. I'm just considering which one. Do not be foolish. You may kill one of us, but not both of us. I'm not bluffing, Balan. And you cannot distract me with those glances behind me. Would it be possible that you are underestimating me? <laughs> Quite all right. I was just passing the window and I saw a couple of your pals had you covered. If you'd have missed, I'd have picked them off for you with this. Well, we don't need this, Johnny. I couldn't have missed. I used a silver arrow. Devil's machinery. You know more about them than I thought. It's all right, Roy. We've got to move off the island at once. How long will it take you to load the boat? About a half hour. Good. Take care of it. I better go and help him. Oh, just a minute, Johnny. Roy still doesn't trust you. And I must admit that I'm a bit confused about you myself. However, we won't take the time to discuss that now. Here are some important papers. Take them to the boat and I'll have more for you when you return. Where are we going? It might be advisable not to ask too many questions. I think so, Mr. Schultz. We'll know as soon as we get a fix on his transmitter. What's the matter, Frank? Coast Guard. Coast Guard. Calling Coast Guard. Coast Guard. Stand by. Johnny! Well, even, Glenda. Fallon's orders. Things have been happening, sweetheart. I know. Morgan killed Etchin Grove, didn't he? Oh, you've been finding things out, haven't you? This is our chance, Johnny. For what? To get away, you and me. What about Morgan? He's still the boss, you know. He doesn't have to be. Meaning what? Johnny, we're in the boat. Let's leave right now. Together, I know a wonderful place. No extradition. I'm not leaving without the money. Where is it? Morgan has it. Let him keep it. We don't want it, Johnny. Oh, no. That's what I risk my neck for, and I'm not leaving without it. He'll kill you. I'll take that chance. Do you know where it is? It's hidden on the island. All of it? Well, yes, but even if we got away with it, he wouldn't stop until he found us. But he won't find us. Listen to me, Johnny. This is our one chance. Take it. Nothing doing. I'm not leaving without that dough. All right, Johnny. Come on, I'll show you where it is. Get the fix. I think we can find him. Good, let's move in.
That's the path. Follow it until you come to a cave. The money's there. I'll go stall Morgan. I'll meet you back at the boat. What are you doing? The stuff stays here. Did the boss say so? I said so. can't happen again, Johnny. I like this. It's a new experience. It's exhilarating, hunting man. Sooner or later, you'll give me another opening. Why don't you give me a chance to fight back? 
You asking for a chance? A man who can perform miracles? A man who can kill a detective without a bullet? Perhaps you can perform the same magic on me. the boat, Johnny. Why don't you make a run for it? What are your alley tricks, eh? I still have one more arrow. It's a silver one. Remember, Johnny? I can't miss with this one. I told you I was a bad loser. Morgan, what are you doing? You're just in time to say goodbye to your friend. Why, Morgan? What happened? Apparently, you didn't find out all about him. You've been a gullible little fool. He's an informer working with the authorities. Well, what's your decision now? There's only one thing to do, Morgan. I told you, Mr. Allegro, I had the advantage of knowing Glenda. Why not give him the chance you'd give any animal? That's right. And you have an advantage over an animal. You can think. I'll give you a five-second start. One, two, three, four. Get out of here. You get going with fast. The feds will be here any minute. That it was true what Morgan said. Yes, but I'm giving you a break. What do you mean giving me a break? Why? Because she gave me one. That's not the reason, Johnny. So long, Glenn. Johnny, wait. I can't go without you. Don't be a sap. I'm not going. I told you I owed the state some time. And this whole thing was part of the deal to cut it down. Well, now you know the score. Johnny, you're only telling me you love me. Pretty scenery. Yeah. I guess I owe you two an apology, especially the lady. What for? Well, it isn't polite to listen in on other people's conversations. Of course, what I heard will make it a lot easier for me to say something nice about two people. You did a good job, Johnny. Thanks. <laughs> 